What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Little Life Podcast. I'm your host, Brady. And yeah, I hope everybody had a good weekend. Hope everybody, you know, got to hang out, do what they wanted to do, relax. Uh, you know, if you're from Oklahoma and you're an OU fan, maybe you went to OU Texas. Or maybe you just watched the game. Sucks OU lost, but, you know, you can't win every game. I'm not a real big football fan, but I grew up in kind of the divided house between OU and OSU, so, you know, I was always kind of around it. But uh, anyways, I was actually in Dallas this weekend, but I was not at the OU versus Texas game like everybody else was in Dallas. I was actually there to see an EDM artist called Odessa, and me and my girlfriend went down, stayed with some family in Dallas, and it was honestly like, so much fun, like, I've never really been to any type of EDM electronic show before, I've always kind of grown up going to rock shows, and then as a, you know, high schooler, I went to hardcore and metalcore and all those types of shows, so I never really went to this type of show, so it was really interesting, it was really fun, the lighting was crazy, the sound was awesome, a lot of really friendly people, and it was just it was just a really good time. If you've never heard of Odeza, O E, O D E S Z A, Odeza, check them out. It's like a it's two guys, and like their performance was crazy. They had like a drum line with them, which is like super crazy for like an EDM artist, because you know it's drum and bass, and most of it it's electronic. But they had a drum line and a trumpet and trombone player, because some of their songs have that in it. And they had them playing that live, which was, like, so sick. Because I, I never really talked about it on here, I guess. But um, I played trumpet from, like, 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth grade. I mean, I can still kind of play. I don't really... I mean, I'm not trying to start a ska band or anything, if that's what you're asking. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, so that was really cool, you know, being that type of musician. I'm like, oh, that's dope. I'm like... You know, that's something you wouldn't think that you would do as a trumpet player unless you were into jazz or something. That you could open for a fucking EDM artist to like thousand, 5,000 fucking people every night or whatever. Like, it's insane. So that was really cool to see that. Uh, we missed the local artist because we got there a little late because of traffic and stuff. Because Dallas is insane. We saw, the, we saw them at a new venue there in Dallas called the... Uh, Toyota Music Factory, which it's actually in Irving, which is actually where my family lives, so that kind of worked out. We didn't have to go far, but re- like brand new venue, super cool. It was it was weird because it's like the venue's like convertible, which like so that means it could go from like a pavilion to an amphitheater to like an actual room. Like it had big these big doors and it had a lawn area. And then it could close those doors and like, I don't know, it was really cool. It was really interesting. But quality was great, lighting was great. It kind of sucks because that night they did have the lawn open so people were out in the grass with their blankets and whatever. And it, right before Odessa started playing, it started raining like really heavy. And, like, there was a thunder and lightning warning, and, like, they had to bring all those people inside, and all these people started rushing in the building. And, like, a bunch of people hopped the fence to get into, like, the pit area, and they kept saying to not do that and all this stuff. It kind of got a little crazy, but when they said to return to the pit area, the people did, which was nice. Um, they were returned to the lawn area. They all did. Most of them went back out there, which was good. And then we had seats right in front of the lawn area, right before the pit. So we were right in the middle. Super good seats, like perfectly right in the middle. It was really dope. So yeah, if you've never been to a show like that, I would definitely like recommend it. It's fun. It's cool. And yeah, so that was that was my weekend hanging out in Dallas, just you know, chilling. But anyway, let's get to uh get to our shows for this week. Uh, I don't think anything new. There's nothing this week uh, really going on. Uh, October 20th is Neon Drift. I've mentioned that a couple times. Um, the Flamingo Meet for Wes, which is a car meet. It says it's October 27th, but I know that they moved the cruise for him to November 3rd, so the meet might end up getting moved to that date. I don't know. They might do them separate. Um, November 4th is Imarosa at 39th. 
fit for an autopsy at the Diamond Ballroom, November 25th. Uh, my Children, My Bride, November 26th at 89th Street. And then everything else is a little far out. But um, those are your show, some shows for now. Your meets and your car meets and your shows. Um, don't really have much else in that vein. Um, and I do have a new jam for this week. Uh, I actually have a couple. I'll, I'll give you a couple. I don't know that I'll have a throwback jam this week. Uh, I'll look and see if I've been listening to something old. Don't think that I have been, actually, which is interesting to me. Um, all right, so I I got two new jams. Um, first is a band called Cloud Break that I again found on Facebook through like ads. I don't Facebook somehow knows to, how to find good music that I like. Anyway, they they're for fans of like Era and like Polyphia, and it said like Fit for a King. Like they're kind of a mix of like all these like really pretty melodic heavy bands but still have like really heavy parts they're they're really cool they only have one ep they're a new band um what's really interesting is on their ep which which is called transitions um they have four songs and then they also have those four songs but instrumental only so they don't have the vocals on them which i thought was really cool actually i've never seen a band do that and they do sound really good just instrumental without the vocals on them. I actually like them just as much, so that's really cool. So check out Cloud Break, their album Transitions. It just came out like not long ago. I don't know the month, but it came out this year, so it's not that old. And then also this song just came out, and I found this from YouTube. But um, there's a r- artist called Toby Lou. He's a rapper, kind of, kind of like pop rapper, whatever. And I saw this song because it was in like the top trending videos on YouTube, and I was like, "Hmm." And it's called Buff Baby, and the cover looked like the scene from the TV show Adventure Time. And I don't know if you follow Adventure Time a lot. I mean, a lot of you, if you're my age, you might have watched it right before right when it became popular and then kind of grew out of it. But um, it actually just recently ended, which is crazy that it's been on that long. It's been like 10 years or some shit. But um, it looks like Adventure Time, only it's the the rapper as a baby when he looks like Finn from Adventure Time. I was like, is he like, is he like mimicking that? And I was like, and he has a song in Adventure Time where he's like, I'm a buff baby and I dance like a man. And he actually says that in the song. He says, I'm a buff baby and I dance like a man, which is like super cool. And then he changes the rest of the lyrics, but it still kind of has the flow of the song from the cartoon. And like all of the artwork in the video kind of look like the cartoon. It's really cool. The song is so freaking catchy and it's like such a good beat. So Toby Lou, Buff Baby, that song is dope. It's from like his newest EP. I don't care about the rest of the EP. I just care about that song, Buff Baby. Super cool, super super cool. I've been actually just listened to it a little bit ago. Like I really, I really like it. So those are my new jams for the week. Uh, I don't know. I'm. We're just gonna. You know what? We're not gonna have. We're not gonna have any throwback gems this week because I just don't have any. Sorry. Um. So I don't really have a super big topic planned for this week, but I am gonna talk about something. I've been. I, I'm sure I have some friends that are involved with this scene or whatever, but for the last, I don't know, four or so years maybe, I've been involved with like something called the hardcore scene here in Oklahoma. And I really like hardcore music. It's something that I'm still learning a lot about, and I'm learning about the scene and where it started, and new bands, and, you know, just... It, it's like it's like a lifestyle as much as it is a genre of music. It's a really interesting thing to me. I have a lot of people involved in that world here in Oklahoma City. We have something called Oklahoma Hardcore. It's an amazing scene. I've met an amazing people. I have a lot of amazing friends from that scene. However, the hardcore scene as a whole, like in like the country or the nation, has this 
can have this sometimes unwelcoming attitude to it that I'm not super a fan of. And there's been things happening at shows here and there lately, which is sparking conversation and stuff that's not, you know, it's needed. People need to talk about the issues and stuff, but it's it's not good things. And recently something happened with a band called Tourniquet, I believe, where they like threw their guitar case and hit some kid in the face, which come to find out that kid says a bunch of racist shit on the on the internet whatever regardless of that of whether they knew that or not i don't think deliberately like trying to physically harm people in any sense is okay now i don't know if you've ever been to a hardcore show but people mosh and they go hard and they swing their arms and they kick their legs and sometimes people get hit or punched or whatever and that's fine because that happens at metal shows and hardcore shows and heavy music. That happens. That's what it's about. It's about getting out your anger. But deliberately hurting people, deliberately punching people in the face, or starting a fight or beating the shit up, beating the shit out of somebody is like literally not okay. If I go to a show, somebody just starts punching me in the face and goes, well, well you're at a hardcore show. That No, that's not how fucking that works. That's not how that works. I don't care what anybody has to say. You don't just get to punch people. Now, if you're moshing and swinging and if I get hit in the head, which I have, you know, whatever. I got hit while somebody was moshing or, you know, crowd killing is even not that big of a deal if you're, like, not super hard punching people. Now, if you're hitting people, like, in the top of their head you're not doing it super hard and you're just going around trying to get people to move and stuff, that's one thing. But if you're just straight start punching somebody in the gut or the face or anything where you're deliberately trying to hurt them, that's fucking bullshit. And especially if you throw your guitar case into the crowd. Like, what are you doing, dude? I don't... Uh, people are... people. A lot of people are like, if you want to call the police or call the venue and try to tell on people because you got beat up at a show, you don't belong here. No, that's that's not how that works. If... Now, if you think that you were jumped or deliberately hurt, then yeah, go to the police. Now, if you just kind of got hurt or kind of caught a backswing from somebody or, you know, something that was obviously not meant to hurt you and you got hurt like a black eye or something at a show, whatever, you know, don't, that's fine. But if somebody deliberately beat the shit out of you and then you try to tell somebody, well, that's hardcore, you don't, don't come around here, that's fucking stupid, okay? don't no don't do that now i don't think calling the venue and trying to get the band in trouble and all that i don't even if somebody did deliberately beat me up i probably wouldn't call the police or call the venue or whatever or try to have outrage on the internet like that's not necessarily me but i could understand why somebody would want to do that and want to tell people not to support a band because that band beat them up and if you go around share, like sharing this thing on Facebook that says you're don't you don't belong in hardcore if you don't want to get beat up that's stupid that's do you want to only have 10 people in your the clique or in your scene coming to your shows forever because you're scaring people away like i get i know what hardcore is about i've i've been around a minute i've studied it i've read about it i listened to it i know what it is about don't get me wrong but like you're going to tell oh if you're in this new generation of hardcore and you don't want to get hit then you're not welcome who the fuck are you to tell anybody where they are not and not welcome you didn't start hardcore because you're 24 and you've been around a minute or you're 26 and you've been in a bunch of hardcore bands and you've been in the Oklahoma hardcore scene forever or whatever scene you're from you, just because you've been around a minute doesn't get to, you know you didn't start hardcore in the fucking 80s okay you're not minor threat you're not some OG punk band. You don't get to fucking say that shit. The guys in the band Terror have been touring for like 20 years and they're in their fucking 40s and they still want new kids to come and they still want to see people jumping and moving and having fun. They don't want, they don't have that mentality. Oh, you got punched. You're not welcome. Because I mean, who would listen to their music if they did that? It's just, it's so asinine to me that you, and I have friends from here. 
that I saw who shared it and agreed with this thing. They're like, yeah, you don't come around. I'm like, come on, guys. Like, I know, I know you guys are better than that. Like, I just, it just boggles my mind that you could just have that same sentiment. Oh, well, if you get hurt, then you just have to deal with it. It's one thing if it's on on accident, but if it's on purpose and you're targeting people, you know, it's just, it's, I don't know. I'm not a fan of that at all. And I just, I don't know. I, I love hardcore. If you want some dope hardcore bands to check out, I could recommend you a lot. I know a lot, especially Oklahoma hardcore. We have so many solid bands, and I have so many friends in bands from here that are just the heaviest band you've ever heard of. There are bands from the Oklahoma hardcore scene that, like, scenes in other states, like, freak out about, and, like, Texas and Kansas and Missouri and Colorado, who th those people drive here to see our bands and vice versa. Like, it's just, there are so many dope bands, and it just, I would hate to see hardcore get diminished because people think that violence is necessary just because it's hardcore. Like, that's cool and all if that's what you think but like you're not gonna have a new growing scene with new kids coming if they're just worried they're gonna get beat up the whole time you know what i mean like i just i just don't agree with it this this whole fucking 20 minute podcast is about to be a rant but whatever i just i don't i don't get it i really don't and just the fact that people are sharing this like these are here's some facts like that's oh people who just get hit are pussies like i'm just gonna read comments on this post from stupid people or just don't go to hardcore shows because they suck because it's 45 year old dudes that's funny that's actually not accurate at all but you know so i don't know i love hardcore i don't want to stop going to shows i have i don't go to shows as much Lately, because I go to I go to a lot of stuff. I go to car meets. I go to shows. I go to out of state for shows. I spend a lot of time with my girlfriend, and I'm trying to spend more time with my family. So, uh, you know, I don't I don't want to fall away from it forever because I have a lot of meaningful friends from that scene. But it just when I see my you know people I know acting, telling people that they're not welcome for really dumb reasons like it's disheartening to be honest and i was in a hardcore band this year at the beginning of this year for like four months i had a band and then we just kind of stopped practicing because like i really like hardcore i even like playing it like playing drums and hardcore is so fun it's like my favorite style to play next to like you know just metal or metalcore or whatever like i really like playing hardcore and i really want to be in a band like that so it's it's even stuff like this makes me think oh well i don't really want to in a hardcore band if people are going to go to my shows and then think that it's okay to beat the shit out of other people because that's hardcore that's just how it is like nah that's i don't know i would like i need to really figure out a way to interview somebody or do my two mics or have an interface i really haven't looked into that yet i haven't been that worried about it yet but i would really like to have some type of debate with somebody on here like this because I think it would I think it would be really cool maybe somebody with a little bit different opinion or you know just maybe looks at it different than me but I don't know I I love Oklahoma hardcore forever I've met a lot of good times and I had a lot of support for them when I started booking shows and that I booked Kublai Khan once and a bunch of People from Oklahoma Hardcore came out from Oklahoma City and from Tulsa, even friends from Texas to support that. And it's just really cool, and I've felt a lot of love in that scene for a long time, but it just sucks that I see, like, this kind of, this shift happening where, like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it just kind of, like, bums me out, you know? And, I, like, I don't want to fall away from shows altogether because... Heavy music is so incredibly important to me. I just I just don't understand, I guess. I don't know. If you have any thoughts, if you listen to this and have any thoughts, you disagree or you agree and you know me or just kind of know me and want to talk to me more about it, feel free to message me, text me if you know me that well. Message me on Facebook or Instagram or wherever. 
you want to talk to me about it because that would be cool. I would like to keep this conversation going. I shared this. I shared my opinions on this on Facebook and to, and got like no response, especially when some of the people that I disagreed with shared it. So I kind of thought that that was interesting that just nobody really wanted to give, you know, an alternate opinion to me. I had I did had some friends who think that that who agreed and said it was corny and and stuff like that so that's cool but I don't know I would like to have a conversation about this so if if this is something that you also feel the same about or feel completely opposite and think that I'm fucking stupid obviously don't message me and say I'm fucking stupid but you know let's sit down let's want to have a conversation about it because this is it's not something that I'm crazy passionate about you know I'm not like Oklahoma hardcore ride or die I gotta go to every show and you know all that like I support it but I just I don't want to see something die that I that I care about because people need to punch people in the face you know what I mean so anyway um I don't really I don't really have anything else to talk about today um no new car stuff in my world just trying to get the money to buy stuff maybe maybe some cool stuff planned for one if not both of my cars pretty soon but anyway that's gonna be the podcast for this week sorry it was just a big long rant but you know what i wanted to talk about it and you know what that's that's what this podcast is for for me to talk about stuff so anyway um that's gonna be it this week my name's brady this is a low life podcast peace